Hey guys, th this is Pastor Jerry here at Cornerstone Church, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining in with us uh, this week. We consider it a great blessing uh, that you've made this choice to partner with us. I do want to give you a little update. I want to make you aware that we're changing our website from cornerstonechurchconroe.org to cornerstoneconroe.org. Once again, the new one's going to be cornerstoneconroe.org, and this will go into effect uh, here in the, the next few weeks. But, but once again, thank you so much for making that choice to be a part of, of Cornerstone Church. I, I feel like it's a great blessing. And, and I want you to know that one of our, our great desires here at Cornerstone Church is really just to help build up the body of Christ, to strengthen each one of us as individuals as we're desiring to, 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 to allow Jesus to transform our lives. And I, I believe one of the greatest ways that Jesus can transform us is through his word. And that means that you and I, we gotta be faithful to getting into God's word. So I, I pray that today's teaching would, would be a great encouragement to your life. But once again, because we believe in transformation, I, I also pray that uh, today's message might, might even bring some realignment into your life because that's, that's my desire. I, I wanna continuously grow in my relationship with God. And I, I believe you, you feel the exact same way. So let me just once again say thank you for joining us. And I pray that uh, today's message is a great help and a great blessing to you. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and, and take them out with me this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask that you turn to the, the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelations. Uh, we're going to be in the very first chapter, picking up in the ninth verse, Revelations 1-9, uh, here in, in just a few moments. Uh, but as I, I said earlier, let me say one more time, welcome to our, our Resurrection uh, Sunday service here at Cornerstone. I, I imagine as you look around uh, you'll probably see a lot of familiar faces and probably see some new faces today. We might even uh, recognize, as we did even in our first service, uh, people who have moved away for uh, various callings upon their life, and they're back in town really just for this special weekend, celebrating uh, with their family. Uh, and in the, joy, the joy of recognizing one another, greeting one another, welcoming one another. I, I want to remind you this morning that there is one really special guest that's here, a really special guest. I, I, let me just say it this way. I think this is the one day out of the year that we understand in a unique way we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. And in this, I believe it's altogether proper that many people, such as we recognize this morning, would, would come to the house of the Lord and, and worship as one on this day that we recognize as Resurrection Sunday. I would also say it's most appropriate that we would have a good number of people with us this morning because I, I believe Due to various circumstances, various limitations of life, if somebody could choose one Sunday out of the year to go to church, I believe that today would be the day that they would choose. If I can only get one Sunday a year, and let me say, I'm so thankful that I get the opportunity to, to go to church many Sundays a year, but if I only got one Sunday out of the year to go to church today, Resurrection Sunday would be that day. You see, the resurrection tells us that Christ's death on the cross was not a disaster. The resurrection also tells us that love is stronger than hate, and that in God's heart, life is stronger than death. So today we recognize that the resurrection, we come to honor the living Christ who desires not, not just to be with us this morning in church, but, but to dwell with us, to live with us every day within our hearts. And he made that promise to his disciples when he makes this statement, Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And I think if we look around the sanctuary this morning, there's more than two or three that's gathered. And who is the special guest? I believe it's Jesus. 
I want you to know Jesus is here with us this morning. I really believe he's with us every Sunday. And as I said earlier, I believe he desires to dwell, to live within us. But if we look into the life of the disciples, even the early church, as the years begin to stretch into decades following the resurrection of our Lord, some people became disillusioned. Even some would describe that they became depressed. This happened particularly as they experienced persecution and great suffering because, because of their loyalty to the lordship of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation was given to John, referred to as the beloved apostle, while he was in exile on the Isle of Patmos. And he makes this statement. We're going to read all of it in just a moment. But he makes this statement in the 10th verse. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And there came to the eye of his soul a vision of the living Christ. How do we know? The 13th verse reads, in the midst of the lampstands was one like the Son of Man. The word translated in the midst in Revelations 1 is the same word that we find in the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th verse, which I read just a moment ago. Today, I I believe we need to recognize and and to respond to the promise of the living Lord to, to meet with his people, to meet with each one of us when we come together for prayer, for praise, for proclamation. Can I also add this? For purification that comes when we choose to make a confession unto the Lord. And and I want us to jump right into this scripture this morning. Look at it with me. Revelation chapter 1. Let's start in the ninth verse. It reads, I, John, am your brother and your partner in suffering in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and also for my testimony about Jesus. Verse 10, it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the city of Ephesus, in, in, in Samaria, in Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me, and he said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death in the grave. He continues, verse 19, write down what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and the things that will happen. This is the meaning of the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven gold lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. God, I pray over these next few moments that we capture your revelation. God, that which I believe that you have appointed for us on this beautiful resurrection Sunday. Lord, really above all things, just trusting that your word would accomplish what you've purposed for it to accomplish. And that your will would be done in us and through us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. My, my prayer this morning is that each one of us would have ears to hear, yet also eyes to see the spiritual reality of the presence of Jesus Christ. 
And I've got good news for you. I only have two thoughts for you. you know, those that attend here regularly are like, Phew, thank God, we got a lot going on this afternoon. I haven't told you how many sub thoughts I have, but I just got two, <laughs> two main thoughts. Not, not, not much. I know you got a lot of great things, and we want to trust that God's work would be accomplished in our life today. Here's my first thought for you. We gain it from God's scripture. Our Lord is alive from the dead. Amen. I'm thankful for the 10 that heard me. I'm going to try it one more time. Our Lord is alive from the dead. Amen. Amen. That, that's why we're here today, right? That, that, that's what we come to celebrate is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We, we recognize that he's not merely a historical figure to whose great deeds we look back with, with admiration, but yet he's alive. We say it again, he, he's alive, and I pray that we allow him to literally to become the Lord of our lives. We recognize that he's alive and he has authority, obviously, over death. In the grave, we often speak of him as one who was, but I'll remind you again this morning, church, he is also the one who is and for who and who also will forever be. His residence on the earth was only parts, we recognize this, only part of his existence. His life doesn't begin there at Bethlehem, nor, nor did it, excuse me, did it conclude when he died on the cross or then when he ascended back into glory with God. He is essentially the living one yesterday, today, forever. He will always be the living one, the living king within our lives. We go back to the book of Revelations for just a moment this morning, and we recognize that John, John, the beloved apostle, saw the Lord. In the midst of the churches, in the person of the Holy Spirit, he came to abide with us, and we also recognize to abide within us. He is not removed by an immeasurable space from where we are living today or where we might be laboring. He, he literally is in the midst of us. We would go as far as to say this, he is quite near to each one of us. He's accessible every hour. Can I say it? Every, every minute, he's accessible every second of every day. And I also recognize that he can observe all of my activities. In the fullest sense, once again, we simply say Jesus is here with us. John saw Jesus in the midst of the churches as the ruling Lord. He's, he is described in terms that that oftentimes emphasize his sovereignty. During his earthly ministry, he exercised authority over diseases. He exercised authority over death, simply over life itself, even natural, natural events of life. He came, he came to demonstrate the love of God himself. And in doing so, we recognize that, that Jesus touched many lives. And I, I would remind us this morning that, that I believe that Jesus is here this morning, that, that lives would be healed, that lives would be, that lives would be restored, that, that lives might would be forever changed. Why? Because once again, we recognize that Jesus is alive. My second thought for us this morning, this is it. As I've already said, our living Lord has come to church today. He's with us in church this morning. We've read it here in Revelations 1. As, and if we were to take time and continue in Revelations 1 into chapter 2 and chapter 3, we would, we would have the opportunity to read the seven letters to the churches there in Asia Minor, we identified the cities that John wrote after his vision of the Lord. And if we were to take time and to read each one of these letters, we would then discover the purpose, the purpose that Christ has in being with us in church this morning. And I just want to briefly identify five, five thoughts for us this morning as to why Jesus, and I'm going to do it quickly for you. Number one. 
Number one, I believe Jesus is here to commend us, to commend us. I believe Christ wants to commend each one of us in every area of our life where we're seeking to do good. In doing so, he wants to affirm, and I believe to encourage each one of us. I want you to recognize that Jesus sees but he doesn't just see. He knows about your faithfulness. He, he knows about your endurance. He, he recognizes your generosity, your kindness, and also your helpfulness. And because Jesus sees and he recognizes all of this within each one of our lives, I, I believe that Jesus is here to commend us. Secondly, I believe Christ has come to correct us. To correct us. Now, let, let, let me say this. He's here to correct us, not to condemn us, right? We know this. John 3 17. For God, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And if there's anything that I've learned in my journey of life, I need some corrections, right? You know, I, I'm. I made this statement earlier. It's hard for me to fathom, but here in a few months, I'm not going to say how many months, but a few months, I'm fixing to hit a a really big number, Randy. I'm fixing to hit 50. Now, when I was younger and I looked at people who were 50, don't take this in a negative way because I'm now almost one of those, I thought those people were ancient. I was convinced that I would never get there. One way, just through ignorance, being crazy, who knows, whatever, maybe Jesus would come back. I thought there's, and hear me, I may not yet. I mean, I got a few months to go before I get there. But if the Lord tarries and I don't do anything too drastically crazy, I may actually get there. And here's what I've learned through the journey of 49 and approximately half years. I've needed a lot of correction. Anybody else? I mean, obviously, when I was like 12, 16, 18, 21, I didn't think I needed any help. But the older I've gotten, the more help I realize I need. And I'm so thankful. Hear me, church. I'm so thankful that Jesus is here not to condemn me, but to correct me. I I, I think we might not want to admit this, but... I think we all realize that there are times that we need to make adjustments, maybe in our attitudes, our ambitions, our actions, sometimes even our speech. And I just want to remind you, Jesus is here to provide the help that each one of us needs, the correction that we need. Number three, let me give it to you. I believe Christ came to cleanse us, and I'm so thankful for this. You know, when we look back over the life of Jesus, we recognize from time to time in the earthly life of Jesus, he he often would offer forgiveness, and there were yet even times that he granted forgiveness to those who were willing to make that confession of faith, recognizing Jesus as, as their Savior, recognizing Jesus as the Lord of their life, I believe every time we come to God's house, we need to do some some heart searching and put forth a sincere effort to confess that I need help, right? That that, that maybe I've done something that's amiss. Maybe I've I've done something that's wrong. And I'll say it again, uh, Jesus is not here to condemn just like Jesus is here to correct. I believe Jesus is also here to provide the cleansing that we need. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. We sing about it, that there's still power in the blood of Jesus to provide the cleansing that I need, to provide the cleansing that each one of us need. Let me me give you a number four. I believe that Christ came to church to comfort us, to provide comfort. I realize it's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. But because I've been there, I know sometimes people show up at church and they've got anguish and pain in their life. I've 
been there. I, I, I've been in that position. I've been in that place where I, I, I've literally been surrounded by, by groups of people, lar- large groups of people, yet at the very same time, I just felt extremely lonely, like I was all by myself. And that, that feeling brings pain, sometimes grief, into our lives. Can I remind us, I believe Jesus is here to provide comfort. The scripture says to provide a peace that will pass all understandings. I just got to learn simply to listen to Jesus and how to rest in his presence. How just to be with him, to rest with him, and to receive his goodness, his comfort, his peace into my life. And let me give you the fifth one this morning. I believe Christ came to church to commission us, to commission us. You see, I I don't believe that the work of Christ is done yet, nor do I believe the work of Christ in you or through you is done yet. What, what, What do I mean? God still has good plans for you. God, God still has a future for you. And not only do you need to hear this, I believe we're surrounded by a needy world that needs to know about the love that took our Savior to the cross and then the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm convinced today, more than ever before in my life, I'm surrounded by people that need to know Jesus. I'm surrounded by people that that need to hear the good news about Jesus. And I believe that Jesus has come to church this morning to commission some of us to go out and to begin to share the good news, to go and tell somebody what Jesus has done for them. Why? Why? Because Jesus loves. You can quote it. I gave you the verse after it. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but might experience everlasting life. And hearing that, that gift, that indescribable gift, is available for every single one of us this morning. That's why Jesus is here. He's here. You see, I'll say it one more time. I believe Jesus came to church today. If you haven't trusted him as the Savior and the Lord of your life, could I, could I remind you, could I encourage you this morning? He, he desires to be that within you. He, he wants you to, He came to church to provide the cleansing that was necessary. He, he desires to forgive. He desires to, to restore every life that is present. I would commend you just as Jesus would if you've already received him as the Lord and the Savior. I, I say congratulations. I, I celebrate with you today, but, but maybe, maybe he has some correction that's needed. And I just say, Lord, I surrender to you. I'm, I'm here for whatever, whatever you have for me today. Maybe, maybe he is your Savior. Lord, you just need some comfort. He's here to provide that once again. And I'll say it one more time. I know he has greater things, greater things in store for your life today. Could I invite you to stand with me once again this morning, church?